us your friend and humble narrator, Lou Brutus, with a hard drive, hard drive XL roundtable. I am joined via Zoom by my dear close personal friends, Mark Tremonti of Alter Bridge and Mike Mushock of St. Asonia. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Thanks for having me. You know, I would actually be curious to hear about the first time that you guys ever met and interacted. Do you recall the uh, the meeting? Uh, I remember probably back with a Stain Creed kind of show, right? I remember we met at a Nam show once. Uh huh. I think we met at a Nam show. I can't even introduce myself and said, "Hey," but yeah, I don't. And then maybe Alter Bridge. I remember one time you guys were playing across from Fenway at uh, the old Avalon. Oh, what a great place. And we came over with some of the Red Sox guys after they won the uh, ALC, no, ALDS it was. Oh, yes. We hung out that night. That was an incredible night. Well, Johnny was on stage with, uh, right. who was their first baseman at the time, Mike? Uh, Millar. Kevin Millar. Ke Kevin Millar was first base then? Yeah. Um, no, there's another guy. I forget who it was, but there was three or four guys up on stage singing after they, they got, they either won a playoff game or they, they won it. Yeah. I was yeah. at the game and we Cal came over afterwards. That was a great night, man. It was. Thank God those guys are good at playing baseball because they sure can't sing very well. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, when guys like you two get together, master musicians, do you talk shop? And if so, what sort of things do you talk about? And then a sort of B part of the question, are there things that you just don't want to share with other guys? No, everything's, everything's fair game. I think it's about music's about sharing and uh, especially when you're an instrumentalist and it's, I think every guitar player learns best by playing with other folks um but i think with me and mike it was mostly like hey man what kind of amp you using or what's your let me see your foot pedals or yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we're on tour it's, it's always kind of hectic so it's they're always tugging you in every direction go go eat before your nine interviews and then uh your meet and greets and your sound checks so it's on tour you don't have a lot of time to sit down and play a lot of guitars with other with other people mike same question uh you know how much do you like sharing and and Oh no, I'll share anything. I got, I got nothing to, I have nothing to hide. If there's anything you want to know, that's for sure. Um, I think for me, it's just more about a friendship, you know, a friendship, establishing friendships and, you know, obviously uh, respect tremendously Mark's talent and how great he is. And it's just more about, you know, I, uh, like I said, just, you know, family and you know, what's going on and you know, that type of thing, you know, how's the day going, you know? And here's another question for the two of you. Mark, I'll let you uh, begin. Sometimes guys are incredible musicians, some of the best on the planet, but they are not the greatest band members. What is it that makes a person not a great musician, but a great band member? Uh, you know, I think it feels like every band has that one guy that kind of <laughs> throws everything in the garbage for the rest of the band. It's, you know, not, uh, I'm not going to say anybody specifically, but it seems like there's, there's always, it's, it, I would much rather have somebody half as talented and twice as cool to be in a bus with for 10 years. Cause it's, it, uh, it really goes, it really goes a long way for your day to day happiness. You know, it's, you know, a lot of the most talented guys out there, sometimes they're just not the nicest people and they're the hardest to work with. So it's, you gotta, you gotta choose your battles and, and pick the most important thing. What to me is that, that friendly, um, generous, hardworking person with the right goals and right ambitions and, and that, you know, that, that right work ethic. Mike, same question for you. I mean, what makes a great band member? What makes somebody good to travel and tour with? No, sure. I think, yeah, it's just, you know, people that, you know, take other people into consideration, you know what I mean? And, and just, you know, realize, you know, that, you know, do unto others as you do unto yourself type of thing. You know what I mean? Where, you know, if you don't want to be treated a certain way, then don't treat somebody else that way, you know? And uh, I think that goes a long way. Like, like Mark said, I, I, <laughs> I spent years trying to trying to find a singer before I came across Aaron, you know, and, and all these 
I just remember all these guys that would show up and just so determined and work so hard and just, you know, always be there. Then they'd go to sing and they couldn't. And they'd be like, oh, how quickly can I get out of it? You know, and then that, there was that guy that would blow you off for three days and never show up. And then one day he finally shows up and you're like, oh my, and those are the guys that are always great. You know what I mean? It was, uh, it's definitely, you know, one of those things that you, you have to figure out and, you know, and find the right combination of, you know, people that are, you know, you can get along with and you can work really well together with, you know, and I think, like you said, pick your battles. I mean, that's really, that's really a big one that I know I kind of live by. It's like, all right, mm-hmm. how important is this decision? Do I really need to, you know, start something over this or not? You know? One last question while we're in this area and uh, you certainly do not need to name names. However, have either of you dealt with anybody who just did something that drove you crazy, like clipping their big ass filthy toenails in the front lounge of the bus, leaving food crusts around? I mean, uh, give, give me one sort of tale of woe from the road. Mark, you go first. Uh, one of my biggest pet peeves is when I'm, when I'm singing on tour with my solo project, and I tell everybody time and time again, no smoking on the bus. And I get up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom or something. The entire bus is like a cloud. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Because they don't, you know, it's just a massive cloud and everybody's laughing and partying. And I'm telling everybody, I got to sleep. I need, I need rest. I need to hydrate. If you want to, if you want to cancel shows, go ahead and keep smoking and keep partying all night, but be responsible. And that will happen once or twice a tour by the second time I'm throwing shit around the bus and everybody's in trouble and then it stops. <laughs> you know, but you, you, have, you have to explain something further because you know, these are Tremonti tours. You're Tremonti. Um, <laughs> why would people ignore you? It's your bus. It's your band. It's your tour. Like how, how do they get away with that? We're buddies, you know, first and foremost, we're just buddies hanging out, having a good time. And then when people start getting drunk and they're up till three o'clock in the morning, the rules start getting blurred and it turns into a party. And, you know, first time I'll wake up and I'll go out there and be like, Hey guys, come on, it's, have a good time. But nobody needs to scream at the top of their lungs uh, or, uh, you know, um, you know, every, you know, with the vaping thing, everybody see, wants to make the biggest vape cloud they can possibly make. So the entire bus is a big cloud and it just drives me nuts. Um, so it just, it, it takes t- for me to the point of getting angry and yelling for it to stop. <laughs> you know? and, and of course the, the yelling further shreds your vocal cords, I'm sure, which leads to an even yeah. better gig the next night. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, for you, um, I mean, w- w- give me maybe one example and you don't have to name names of something. No, no. That I'll, 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 I'll be a little bit. Uh, there, there's one that I, I always found that was funny. We had this, uh, one kid that worked for us forever and great friend. And uh, he felt the need in the middle of the night to get up and take a soda out and literally take one sip. And I swear, put it on the edge of the table. <laughs> so like you'd get up and it would just be, I mean, like, I, I'm like, dude, what is it? Do you only like the first sip of every drink? Cause there's like seven, there's like sodas here with like one sip taken out of all of them. And they're just scattered across the front lounge. You know what I mean? You're out of the band, you bastard. You're yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's the, the, rest of the, the rest of the soda is not good. You can only just drink that first sip. <laughs> Paragraph six, no leaving sodas. Right. You're out. But you know what the thing is? Those be- stupid things that when you're together for years on end, that you're, you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, how hard is it to either pour it out or you know, and finish it? Oh, so. yeah. You know, I just noticed, Mike, I see the cable. I see what amp that cable is going into behind you, and it makes me, makes me happy. See that? You need to describe what you, you two are talking about because you're, you're talking some sort of guitar language here that most humans don't understand. No, it's more behind stuff. Mike, he's got a stack of amplifiers, and the top right there, he's got his cable plugged into the old MT15, yep. I believe. Yeah, no, my vision's not. no, you're absolutely right. I use it around the house here. I love it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. But it's right, it's right behind me as well over here. It's tucked. Uh, yeah, there you go. Know. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Now, is that something that 
you guys do when you get around somebody's rig for the first time? Do you start crawling through or at least side eyeing what's going on over there and what they have plugged in? Absolutely. I think that's one of the first things you do on tours. What are you playing through? Let me, let me plug in, see how it sounds and feel free to use anything I got. You know, I think it's with a, with a good guitar player, somebody who's, touring a lot i think it's an en endless quest for for the perfect tones you know okay. a lot of people are going the uh digital route these days but you know some of the people that are still using tube amps and whatnot it's an endless quest no it is unfortunately you guys are not on tour right now for obvious reasons mark you guys have been able to do something uh naming an honorary roadie which I thought was, uh, uh, it was fun. It was also very clever and I think a, a super nice thing to do if you would sort of describe uh, uh, what went into this. Well, we, you know, because our crew is, is sidelined for who knows how long, uh, we know it's hurting them financially just to be sitting at home. So we, um, you know, we just did, a, did some merch for them and put it up in our store and told our fans, you know, it's, it's hard to ask people to go buy stuff and spend money right now because because it's financially such a, um, a drain on everybody right now. But um, we just said, you know, if anybody's interested, we got these cool shirts and whatnot to kind of honor our roadies and check out our merch store. All the profits will go to those guys to help them as we're waiting to get back on the, on ro on the road. And uh, you guys uh, also have put together the uh, You Will Be Remembered uh, video. If you can uh, speak about that, I think people would be keen to hear it. Yeah, you, you know, that song was written about just people that sacrificed their lives or put themselves at risk to serve the rest of us. And uh, it seemed to be the most fitting time in the world right now for all the folks on the front lines that are um, risking their, their health for the rest of us right now. You know, nobody knew how serious this was going to be, and we still don't. But those people that um, put themselves at risk when they knew this could have been a complete disaster. Um, you know, they should be, they should be honored. So that song was kind of the video treatment for that was put together to kind of, uh, give props to them. Very nice job. Um, uh, Mike, you and I had spoken previously about this, but I'd like to revisit, um, St. Asonia is doing some online stuff. You're not a part of it because you're not up in Canada, but if you could give us a little background on that. Yeah, I know uh, Adam and Kale have been doing, um, you know, some acoustic stuff online and, and putting that out there. So I think that's been just a, you know, since we can't be out there playing, just a way to try to keep, you know, the music out there and, uh, you know, keep the band out there and keep people entertained a little bit while everybody's stuck at home. What have been some of the things that you have watched or seen or listened to musically uh, as uh, folks have gravitated from home? Go ahead, Mark. I don't. I'm. I'm. I've kind of really not been not been much for me actually. So I've just been keeping busy doing uh, doing some stuff around here. Yeah, you know, I've um, I painted my entire house, um, and then I will have a lot of time to sit down with the guitar. Um, I'm working out a lot of. Uh, I'm actually just started in the studio yesterday or the day before yesterday with Elvis. You know, um, my producer lives ten minutes from me and. We talked to one another. We're like, you know what? I've done nothing but isolate this time. I, I know you have done the same thing. I think we're pretty safe together. Neither one of us sick. Let's get in the studio. And um, I'm writing a song um, right now to to be uh, to collaborate with Eric Gale, who I think is one of the greatest guitar players in the world. Great guy. Um, Joe I've, seen him, I've seen him a number of times. And, and who else? It sounds like Bonamassa. Joe Bonamassa is producing his upcoming record. And so Eric asked me if I'd want to uh, work on a song with him. So I got in the studio with Elvis and tracked a demo um, that we're just going to mix up and send to him and see how he digs it. And um, while we were in there, I called Elvis and like, please help me out make, to make a demo because two of my biggest guitar heroes are going to be listening to it. So I don't want to, if I get on logic, it's going it's to sound very amateurish. Please help me make this thing sound good. So he's like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and it, with, 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 with all those names you mentioned, it's very important that you not suck, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I'm going to do it in GarageBand, I'm not very good when it comes to technology. I count on engineers and producers to make my stuff sound good. But um, my, my producer said, you know what, I've got a good eight days 
open right now. If you just want to come in and start laying down the next solo record demos, we can go through pre-production now. So uh, we got the first track done yesterday and we're going to go and try and knock another one out today. And uh, we'll probably just work through the weekend and then uh, see what happens. Well, listen, uh, I'm very glad to see the two of you and I'm glad you're doing well under the circumstances. I'm very sorry that we're not together in person. Uh, you two guys have been uh, uh, great to me through the years and, and always have interesting conversation. And uh, I just hope that we get to do this again face to face and uh, not over the, uh, the frickin' internet. Sound good? Sounds great. Absolutely. And next, next time I won't be late. This technology, I couldn't get on the, I couldn't get on the damn line for some reason. It kept on kicking me off. Damn rock stars, you'll, you'll figure it out. Yeah. But I uh, appreciate the time. Mike Mushock, always good to see you. Mark you Tremonti, good to see you as well. And be good safe, be well, my best to everybody on your ends. You too, guys. We'll see you.